Amyloblastic fibroma by Austin Wrencher and J.C. Post. Amyloblastic fibromas are rare tumors found in younger patients, often in the posterior mandible, that are formed by the continuous growth, growth of odontogenic tissues from the dental follicle. Amyloblastic fibroma is a mixed neoplasm arising from odontogenic epithelium and mesenchyme that resemble the dental lamina of a developing tooth. It does not contain hard tissue and it is difficult to distinguish from other mixed tumors due to its variable histologic appearances. Amyloblastic fibromas are most often found in the posterior mandible, though they can be found in the maxilla. The tumor is often found accidentally as the patient generally presents without symptoms or complaints. When symptoms do occur, they usually include pain and tenderness of the area. Clinical signs that may accompany it are painless swelling and adjacent teeth may also be affected. Hard swelling of the jaws was a principal finding, but symptoms could also include ulceration, pain, and drainage. Three-fourths of cases of amyloblastic fibroma are associated with an impacted tooth. Painless swelling as well as facial asymmetry and altered occlusion may also be possible in severe cases. Amyloblastic fibromas make up approximately 2% of odontogenic tumors. They occur in less than 1% of the population and usually occur in the first two decades of life. They have a slight predilection for males, though reports of this vary. These tumors may recur and may become malignant in some cases, which differs from other similar mixed tumors, so it is important to diagnose correctly. Radiographically, these lesions are generally found in the posterior mandible. They are well demarcated and usually present on radiographs as a small radiolucent unilocular or a larger multilocular lesion. They can cause displacement of adjacent teeth or they may prevent their eruption. Bulging of cortical bone may also be seen. Reports of sizes for this tumor are variable, though the sizes found in one study were from 0.7 to 16 centimeters. Differential diagnosis. The differential diagnosis for an ameloblastic fibroma can include several different lesions. The other lesions considered will vary based on the location, internal structure, and involvement with other structures. The age of the patient should be taken into consideration since a patient in the second decade of life is more likely to present with an ameloblastic fibroma. In order of likelihood, the most common differential diagnosis is a dentigerous cyst followed by hyperplastic follicle then an ameloblastic fibroma, and then finally an ameloblastic fibroodontoma. If the lesion on the radiograph is unilocular, which is the most common internal structure for an ameloblastic fibroma, and has a follicular relationship, the possibility of a dentigerous cyst must be considered. Dentigerous cysts, which are comparatively more common, may be impossible to differentiate from a small unilocular ameloblastic fibroma, both radiographically and clinically. Although ameloblastic fibromas are a less common lesion than nitigerous cysts, a biopsy must be taken to arrive at a definitive diagnosis. A hyperplastic follicle may be ruled out if there is noted facial asymmetry, either clinically or radiographically, and if the related teeth have been displaced or have failed to erupt. Ameloblastic fibroodontomas are the least likely of these differential diagnoses due to the usual inclusion of hard tissues. However, immature cases may not show evidence of said tissues, in which case a biopsy must be performed in order to arrive at a definitive diagnosis. Treatment options for an ameloblastic fibroma can include either enucleation from, of the tumor followed by local curettage or surgical resection. Treatment through enucleation and curettage is usually the best recommendation. The treatment is relatively conservative, which allows surrounding structures, including the teeth, to remain behind. In addition, the recurrence and malignant transformation rates of the tumor are both relatively low. More invasive procedures should be reserved only for larger and more complex ameloblastic fibromas, which are a much rarer occurrence. 
Treatment should be referred to an oral surgeon due to familiarity and expertise. This ensures that surrounding structures are not damaged and improves the chances of the tumor being completely removed. Clinical signs and symptoms of a meloblastic fibroma include pain, tenderness, and swelling of the associated area. Though a lot of time, no symptoms or signs are present, and the neoplasm is found incidentally on a radiograph. On radiographs, these tumors are most likely found in the posterior mandible. They show up as a radiolucent lesion with a well-defined border and can be either unilocular or multilocular. The preferred form of treatment is enucleation of the tumor followed by a curettage.